wild in the streets. Running, running, wild in the streets. Wild in the streets. We're running wild in the streets. We're running wild in the streets. We're running wild in the streets. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. That's right. Happy Memorial Day weekend, everyone. I hope you and your loved ones are well. Strap in. We're going to have a great show today. You could, you could bet your sweet bippy. <laughs> What's going on out there? Yes, Mark Tolch. How's things up in, how's things up in Canada, brother? Hey, Carlo. Thanks for stopping by. Rap Bones. Yo, come on now. Mike Tittle, Grunge and Grime Soap Company. What's up? Ray Hogan up in Connecticut. Yeah, man. That's right. What's up, Chris? Yes, Joey Castillo rules. We'll be talking about that on the show. Yep. Yep. Eddie Medina, what's up, brother? Good, good. Hey, Holly. Good to see everybody. Good, Nico. We could use some love from California. Because <laughs> New York's a war zone now, let me tell you. It's crazy. What's up, Chris? I hope you're feeling well, buddy. Good, good. Everything's good. I'm ready. I'm ready. You're ready. We're ready. New York Hardcore Chronicle style. Let's go. Here we go. What's up with this guy? What's up? What's up? What's up with this guy? Don't cry. Memorial Day weekend. Uh, traffic Bro, I, headaches, I, barbecues. I know. Yo, my in my world, there's no time and no space. Memorial Day weekend, Monday, Saturday, Friday <laughs> morning. It's like I live in a space-time continuum, bro. It's all the same to you. Yo, I want to shit. I want to shout out Larry Kelly and Chris Wren over at the new Bridge Nine building, uh, getting ready uh, to 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 open it up to the public. Hopefully, one of these days, you know. Oh, nice, nice, nice. We'll have to. We should do an episode from there. Road trip, yeah. road trip, road trip. Where is photo of the day? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, <laughs> it's a good one. Hold on, let me clear everything off here. Wrong answers only, please. Photo of the day. Bam. Wrong answers only, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's no is hints it, on that one. Is it great meeting you with the bowl, Stephen? <laughs> yes, absolutely, Eddie. Yo, know, more people come. More people come to talk. More people come and talk to you publicly than me. People see me and they they glare at me. You, they come, they talk to. Cause you're scary. Is it Drew Stone? Is it Drew Stone? Is ah. it is it Dexter Holland? Is it John Joseph? Oh, is it is it Jimmy Graham? Who's Jimmy Graham? I know Billy Graham. Is it good one? Best one so far. Is it James Gardner? Good one. I like that. Is it stigma? Is it Elton John after midnight? <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'm so, yo, you know what? You know who I'm down on right now? Elton John. Uh oh. Yo, fuck that guy. Wow. You know what I mean? I'm I'm over that dude. Who's worse, Elton John or Billy Joel? Billy Joel. Sing me a song. God, <laughs> that makes me want to just that makes me want to drink Drano, slip my wrists, and throw myself off a rooftop at the same time. Is it? Is it Paul Weller? Is it Handsome Dick? Uh, hey, hey, we saw him the other day at the show. Handsome Dick was at my film the other That's night. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It was great. Great to is see Is it him. Skeletor? <laughs> yeah. Is it Bobby Blitz from Overkill? <laughs> That's good. Oh, is yeah. it Frank Sinatra? <laughs> is it Mike Gallo? Is it just some crazy punk? Kinda. But I'll give you a clue. I know this. This guy apparently is his brother, right? Yep. <laughs> that's that's Frank Sinatra's <laughs> brother who plays drums in the band. That much I know. You know, he looks like a deer in the headlights. It looks like I caught him hiding behind the drums doing something bad. 
watching his brother just go <laughs> off. Is it Robert Hogg? What's his brother's name? What's dude's name that plays drums? Oh. Is it Pete something? Fuck, I can't remember. Yeah, what's dude's name that plays drums behind his brother? Is it is it is it Colin GBH? Is it Mohawk <laughs> Optional? <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. If somebody knows dude's uh, drummer dude's name. All right. Right answers only, please. Here we go. Shouldn't be too hard. I was actually at this show. Right answers only, please. Here we go. Hmm. Is Any it, hints there? Is it Stephen Messina? <laughs> is it Dr. Evil? Is it Nico McBrain? All right, here we go. Is it Waddy? Is it what is it Waddy? Is it Waddy the Exploited? Is Waddy? it Edinburgh? Is it Edinburgh's finest? Ah. Yep. It is Waddy. It is the exploited, as a matter of fact. Yeah. And and it was actually the first time I've ever gotten to see them. I've never seen them before. You know what? And, it was uh, the first time I ever saw them too. And it was at a venue I've never been to called the Melrose Ball. The place sucked. <laughs> In uh, Astoria. And uh, it was it was a really actually it was an excellent bill though. It was the exploited. It was the Cro-Mags and Total Chaos. And uh, the room had never had a show like that. Like every, it's it looks like it's mostly like a catering hall or a club or something, where all the security guys said it was their first day on the job, and uh, I mean it, it, I enjoyed it. I mean the the lights were a little stroby, and uh, and it was loud as hell. But but overall, I thought all three bands really delivered. I beg to differ. <laughs> I beg to differ. Well, tell I me your feelings. The name of the venue was called um, the Me Melrose Ballroom. The Melrose Ballroom. It just <clears> happens <throat> to be down the block from where my girlfriend lives in Astoria, Queens. So we ah. literally just walked down the block. It is a Greek catering hall. Ah, the okay. venue was an abomination. <laughs> it was the sound. It was it was the sound system was all bass heavy for like whatever whatever hip music is going on now. So all I could hear from the back of the hall was <laughs> so there was that. So in a certain regard, every band that play sucked. <laughs> I was up front. I and, 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 and they better. sucked, not because of any fault of their own. It's because every, the, the sound was so bad. And also the, the, the lighting, the lights that you love so much, was like all these modern computerized. I didn't say I love the lights. Computerized I lights. Stroby. I thought I was gonna too stroby. I thought I was gonna have a fucking a seizure, bro. I thought well, I was they had gonna the have signs a seizure. In the window. They had the signs. Did they? Saying, Did they have yeah. the signs? Yeah, that said strobes in use. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't care for the lights, but 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 over from where I was. Play, it, here's it a question: Who plays guitar in Chromags? Uh, there was two guitar players. Yes. Uh, one of them was um, the guy that was just in Slapshot. I'm drawing a blank. Um, Al, is it? He was just the, the latest guitar player in Slapshot. He left Slapshot, joined Chromex. And the lead guitar player is apparently this like flamenco guitar player, smoking guitar, lead guitar player. So, yeah. Yeah, no, over, I mean, you know, we were in different locations for the show, so I think we have different perceptions. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. So Yeah. Uh, but, one but of us has one of us I has know, to be the, the yang to the other yin. Yeah, listen. You know what? It's the first time I yo, I gotta I gotta move. You know, I never saw the exploited either, but I, I definitely have a new move that I'm gonna pinch from Wadi for my repertoire. <laughs> he does this thing. Why? Yeah. yeah. If anybody you know comes was... to the next show and you see me do this, Waddy. Waddy Stone. <laughs> Be pinching. What, what I thought was funny is that his 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 uh his mohawk now, as he's gotten older, 
I've never seen a receding mohawk before. Yo, Wadi's like, hard. Man. His, Wad, his Yo, mohawk Wadi's was still... here, and now How it's dare you? Here. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? It's hanging in there. How dare you speak of Wadi in such, you know, Wadi. Yo, Wadi's like, what how old Wadi's like 60 something? 65. He's, he's, he's Vinny, he's yeah. Vinny Stigma's age. Actually, <laughs> Vinny, Vinny's 66, but Charlie Harper still has both of them beat. Oh, yeah. Charlie Harper's almost 80. I think he's 74. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, you know, those guys are keeping it going, you know? By the way, the next four shows are coming up. This Wednesday, June 1st, uh, straight out of my new film, Laser Lloyd will be on the show. Um, after this Wednesday, I am heading to Germany. I have a book signing at Cortex in Berlin. Then I'm going to Gutenberg to screen my new film. Then I'm going to be in Israel screening my new film. So there will not be a show for a week and a half. And wow. then, and then, yeah, basically. Is that right? Hold on. Let me check that. Yeah, I believe that's right. And then we come back strong on Wednesday, June 15th with Satan. Satan will be on the show. Ruler of hell, swallower of souls, creator of rock and roll, guaranteed to be a really, really entertaining and funny show. Then Sunday, June 19th, you asked for it. You got it. By popular demand, my old friend, Evan Seinfeld. And we're going to talk. We're going to get into it with Evan Seinfeld. It's going to be great. Wednesday, June 22nd, uh, from Enraged, Jeff Altieri and Joe James and Mike Scandato from Inhuman will be on the show. So cool stuff coming up. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Mike LaRouche coming in from Vermont. Where in Vermont are you, bro? Yes, Enraged, the pride of... Yeah, Charlie's the same age as Mick Jagger. Is that right? That's crazy. Uh, actually, Jagger is 77 or 78, I think. Yes, that's right. It, it's it's Gottingen. Am I pronouncing it right? Not Gothenburg. Sorry. Let's see, you fucking, what do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me to, to, to you know, hail Satan? Absolutely. <laughs> you know? All right. Hey, man. I'll see you later. Alligator. I'll see you, no, I'll see you later. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in a bit. Hail. <laughs> Snail. All right. Well, there you have it. This is the one, the only New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. And we are sponsored by Organic Grill, the Texas Silver Rush, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Chacho's Tacos, Generation Records, 126 Hardcore Clothing, Grunge and Grime Soap Company, and New York Hardcore Comics opened in 2013, selling comic book, comic books, comp, comp rock, rock, punk rock and hardcore memorabilia, toys, statues, skateboard decks, tapes, vinyl, and all things horror. We love helping bands push their demos and new tracks, so please stop by and drop off your new music. We have in-store events like Magic the Gathering and Warhammer tournaments, plus meet and greets with bands and some live performances. Open seven days and shipping worldwide. Find us online through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and eBay. Located at 117 Main Street, Lovely Dobbs Ferry, New York. www.newyorkhardcorecomics.com Come on now, the Texas Silver Rush. It is a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres, both country and western, to design and create unique one-off pieces as well as style them for stage, album covers, promo photos, and social media exposure. The client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers, Greg Rolle, Ring of Star, and of course, my friends and yours, Agnostic Front. Information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages, and of course, www.thetexassilverrush.com. Last but not least, located in Corpus Christi, Texas, Chacho's Tacos opened the doors in 2001, home of the almighty Chacho's Taco. They cook up an incredible home-style Tex-Mex food, and this month they're celebrating their 21st anniversary. They've been supporting underground music since the beginning in their own words. 
We ain't stopping anytime soon. Touring bands that play Corpus Christi, swing by and get a home cooked meal with Chacho's Tacos. We got you. The underground scene will never die. Please follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. That said, let's bring our guest on. Um, is there cassette versions of the new Antidote recordings? What new Antidote recordings? I'm in a band called Incendiary Device now. We will be recording our full length relatively soon um i think i read that it was charlie charlie harper related to caesar ramiro i think i read that somewhere could that be we'll have to look somebody researched that is charlie harper related to to caesar ramiro aka the original batman from the excuse me the original joker from batman that said let's bring our guest on huh enough of this chit chat you know, T tired of this silliness. Um, let me clear the deck. Oh, man. Clear the deck. What the heck? Let's get it on. Today's guest is an American guitarist hailing from Hawthorne, California. Active since 1979. He is known for his work with the bands Red Cross, Bad Religion, Punk Rock Karaoke, GFP, and of course, currently, back on the circuit, Circle Jerks. Please welcome, coming at us from Encino, in the golden state of California, Mr. Greg Hetson. Hey, Amen. What an introduction. Thank you. Yes, my pleasure, my friend. I wish, the back, I wish my background looked as pretty as yours, <laughs> but I'm in my, you know, I call it the room of doom. It's kind of like office slash storage yeah. for anything from musical equipment to shoes. But I'm open. confused. I see drums back there. Yeah, well, I, I, I did a little recording at my house. I got a studio. My garage <laughs> got converted into a studio. We have a drum kit. Okay. Yeah. Hey, th these are things that are good to have. Like, I, I, I have them in storage now. It's like, <coughs> dr uh, the one thing I'm missing is drums. Because every time, you know, I, I produce a show or do something in the park or something, it's like, fuck, we need drums. It's like, I should just buy a drum set and just put it in the storage room. I don't understand why all these drummers feel entitled that they need to have a backline. Back in my day, Sonny, we brought our own gear everywhere. No shit. I was just talking about that today. Bands, bands today don't want to do jack shit. Just they, want, they just want to nice. show up and play. Yep. Yep. So, hey, just before we get into it, how about those Rangers? You see the game last night? Uh, yeah, they spanked them pretty good. <laughs> you know? Going to game seven, eh? Oh, listen, you know. Yeah, you know, me and they have to break. They have to break the, uh, you know, that pattern of every every you know home team winning. You know, it's like we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, let's go. Rangers is right. You know, sorry about your Kings, bro. <laughs> Nobody expected them to even make the playoffs, and they took Edmund in the seven. Not disappointed. Yeah, yeah, right. Ray Hogan says they can't win in Carolina. Well, we'll see. They, you know. We'll see. It's tough in hockey, man. Winning winning on the road is really tough in hockey. Especially in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk. How did you come up? Uh, we're, 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 uh, you, you know what? Before we get – I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. What's the latest? What's going on? Uh, what's the latest with, with – uh, What's the latest? Uh, yeah. We're getting back to go, – go, getting ready to go back out and do some makeup shows that were canceled yep. last year. And then from – uh, stuff that we had to postpone this year as well. At the end of June, you know, we're gonna hit the East Coast, a couple shows in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, then off to Europe. Has it been? Uh, I know this is sort of like the never-ending tour, but not by choice, being that it was, it's, it was what announced like three years ago, and, and yeah. you know, and then, and then, uh, <coughs> you know, Keith got Keith got sick, and that that postponed things again, but. Was it was it really um, finally exhilarating to get out there and do it? It was pretty terrifying at first. We think we were all a little nervous. We hadn't played yeah, together in ten years, probably. Mm -hmm. But we did a uh, a lot of practicing during the pandemic. We we want we didn't want to embarrass ourselves, so we really we were in the best shape we've ever been musically. I think. Wow. We really took it seriously. So. Uh, we had the odds, 
little more in our favor, I think, because of that, because of all the prep we did. And is this is this the first um, time that that Joey's playing with you guys? Yeah. 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 He's, he's been hitting me up for years. Dude, if you ever get back together, I want to be the guy. So that was right. always in the back of my head. Almost every time I'd run into him. So he's a great addition. He's, he got, he whipped us up to another uh, level, I think, you know? Yeah. He, he keeps us on our toes and punk hurts playing with him. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, he drives hard, man. Yeah. You know, that, that's, you know, and you guys play a long set too. It's like an hour. Is yeah. it? Yeah. There's a lot of songs. I was just like looking 30, at the set list and I was 30, thinking, 30 holy songs. shit, it's like 30 songs, 40 songs, right? Something like that. I think 33. I'm sure Europe is Europe's gonna be great, man. People are gonna be super super. I hope so. It's, this will be only the second time we ever made it over there, believe it or not. Yeah. Great. So did, how did you come up? Did you grow up in a musical household? T tell us about that. Well, I do actually do have a New York background. I was born in Brooklyn. And my family moved to L.A. Well, area when I was two, almost three-ish. A musical background. My dad was a huge music fan. Yeah, I guess he was kind of a vinyl junkie. He'd always be playing music, to go to record stores. So he kind of grew up as a music fan, not necessarily the stuff that he liked. Right. It's like show tunes, folk music from the fifties, but he did listen to a lot of the protest music from the sixties. You know, when you say protest music, would that be like, um, you know, anti-Vietnam wars, you know, who, who am I thinking of? Not, um, I'm not going to march anymore. Phil Ox. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, like that kind of, that's when I think of Vietnam protest music, I think of Phil Ox, you know, Country Joe and the Fish, you know. Didn't listen to Country Joe and the Fish. It was more the, you know, the kind of the New York-based folk stuff for the most part, you know. Some of it was really schmaltzy, like the Weavers and, uh, you know, like Peter, Paul, and Mary, you know, that kind of stuff. Joan Baez, yeah. Judy hey, yo, sh Shouting out our old friend Al Barrill from SSD Control. He says, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young? Not really, no. Yeah. You know. I, I like Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. That's okay. Woody Guthrie? Yes, Woody Guthrie. Yeah, yeah definitely. Woody Guthrie. Arlo Guthrie. Yeah. yeah. You know, he listened to a lot of FM radio when it was freeform back in the day before it was all formatted. So you get a mishmash of stuff on the radio. Right. And you, you grew up in Hawthorne? Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that the home of the Beach Boys? Why, yes, it is the home of the Beach Boys. <laughs> What was it like growing up in the shadow of of Al, of, uh, of Mike Love? Uh, you know, it was a pride of the city. I never really liked the Beach Boys much. I like a few songs. Yeah, but I I don't I don't get why. That's just my, just me. It's like the Beach Boys. Oh, dude, Brian Wilson. Blah, 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 this song, that album. Right. I don't get it. It's like yeah, great harmonies. There's some great arrangements, but it's it doesn't really do anything for me. You know, when, when I know we're skipping around, but when the first wave of like American hardcore and punk hit, mm -hmm. I'm assuming there was sort of that sort of like, fuck the Beach Boys, <laughs> that whole bit, right? Like, but yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But I mean, uh, so, yeah, I get, yeah, grew up. Just my, my dad tried to learn guitar. He had an acoustic guitar laying around, which I still have, a nylon string. And it's, uh, but he never could figure it out. He tried banjo at one point, he said. But he sang a lot of a lot of stuff in the shower, a lot of opera in the shower. <laughs> he had a pretty good voice. Anyway, so at one point, my parents, you know, like about 10, 11 years old-ish, you know, to be a well-rounded, you know, individual, you should play an instrument. Huh. He would be like Danny Bonaducci. It's the Partridge family. You know, <laughs> TV, you know and... So Every, like, everyone's dream uh, yeah, exactly. you, you and I are basically the same age so yes everyone's dream at, at that at that uh, you know at that age I want to be Danny <laughs> oh man uh, so anyway they uh, you know driving to elementary school one day and 
you know, heard like the opening ripped up around the band by Credence. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that, that's what, that, I want to play that. What's that? That's the guitar. I'm like, okay, I like sure. that sound. So they got me some lessons. I took them for a bit, got me a, like a cheap, you know, beginning electric guitar and it'll practice. What was your first, what was your first viable guitar? Uh, I don't, the first, probably the first one I had was some Japanese. Yeah. I don't know what it was. It didn't, uh -huh. didn't have a name on it that I know of. The amp was a Harmony amp, though. I do remember that. And, uh, you know, I took some lessons, played it for a bit, and then went under my bed until I was like 16, pretty much. Sure. I wasn't disciplined. Yeah. Oh, you too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Hey, a lot of people are asking gear questions. Sure. Hold off, hold off on the gear questions, you guys. We're, we're going to make our way to it. We're definitely going to talk some gear. Uh, we're going to talk some gear with Greg. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely. One thing you mentioned was FM radio. Yeah, right here. There you go. That's all you need. Uh huh. That, 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 that's all you need. That's all you, um, need. you know what? But no, I don't want to. No, I'm going to stay on track. Stay on you know, track. Stay I'm going to stay. Um, one thing you mentioned was FM radio. And, you know, like I said, you know, being about the same age, FM radio was so vibrant when we were, when we were kids, man, there was like so much, so much great stuff on, on, on FM radio that, that even to this day, I go back and I, I'll look, I'll look on YouTube. Like wh what was that? Like there was just exposed to so much music, our generation on, on and, FM radio. You, know, you could say fuck on the radio. There was no FCC bullshit. It, it yep. was, it was kind of like, the early days of internet radio. Yeah. Right. Wild, the wild west. Yeah. And also you being out there in California, <clears throat> I'm sure was an incredibly vibrant market for FM radio. Absolutely. You know, you know, I was in New York and it was pretty vibrant, but you know, that, 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 that kind of thing. Um, so you, st so what was the impetus to pull the guitar back out from under the bed and, and, and sort of get cracking? Because a lot of my friends were learning an instrument and taking lessons and wanting to start bands. So it kind of motivated me to like, oh, maybe I'll do that. Um, one of, so I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to throw this picture up here and this is a bunch of really young kids Yeah. and man, man, you guys look like you're 13, 14, 15 years old. I was um, 17, Jeff was 15, Steve was, when we started, he almost turned, he just about turned, turning 12. And then Ron, our drummer, was 19. And so, is this, is this the tourists? No, that, that's Red Cross. And that's, uh, mm -hmm. and you notice I'm holding a bass because for one song I would play bass and, and then uh, Steve would sing and Jeff would play guitar. Mm -hmm. And that's my first real guitar, the Gibson S1. Yeah, I looked that up. That's that's a gem. Um, you don't still have that, do you? I don't. Beauty. That's a Gibson S1, kids. Yeah. And 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 uh, let, let me throw it out there to our audience. Who else played a Gibson S1? Other noteworthy guitar players who played a Gibson S1? Post it up. What was was Red Cross? The tourists initially, and then you changed the name. Yeah, we found out there was a band called uh, the Tourists in England. So <laughs> we, sense. I don't know. I think somebody hurt themselves, cut themselves, and at practice at Jeff and Steve's parents' house, and we had to get a band aid and like had the Red Cross on it. That's how I remember. It's like, oh, Red Cross. That's what about that for the band name? And then they got they got harassed about that name a little bit down the road, and they had to yeah. sort of change the, the spelling of it and the whole bit, right? Yep, that is true. What's this question? Did the Mongrels predate Red Cross? Yeah, I was in a band for a second with uh, a couple of the guys that ended up in the leaving trains, like Falling James, and yeah. Okay. Um, you know what? Fuck it. Let's jump into it. Did Greg buy his first SG from Jeffrey Lee Pierce? Well, yes, that is true. I had, when the Circle Jerk started, I was playing a uh, a Firebird with P90s. If anybody knows that, whatever. Yeah, we, my our our audience is is uh, okay. Yeah, but the thing would not stay in tune, and I didn't know that. Oh, maybe I can just change a tuning peg so get them worked on, and it will stay in tune. Or 
So I just, band came to me and goes, dude, get a guitar that stays in tune. And Jeffrey Lee Pierce said, oh, hey, I hear you're looking for a guitar. I'm selling my SG. I'm like, okay, cool. It's Gibson. It's old. You know, it's vintage. Maybe, you know, probably 15, 18 years old at that time, whatever, early 70s. Maybe it wasn't even that old. Anyway, whatever. It was. It looked cool. I liked the, the way the tailpiece looked. It played great, stayed in tune. So that's how I ended up playing the SG. Do you still have that one? I do not. That one I broke. I, I know this is not that guitar, but but correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't this similar? That is older. Okay. Yeah. That's a beautiful. That's a beautiful guitar. That's man. a '62. That's actually a Les Paul. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. But I mean, it's an SG shape, but it is called the Les Paul. Yeah. I guess. I guess the early SGs were called Les Pauls. For a couple of years, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And okay. that guitar has been broken a few times and set on fire. You notice <laughs> the pick guard's missing part of it towards the yep. pickup there. The yep. tech accidentally dropped a soldering iron on it, and then there's all the smoke, and he's running across stage during sound check. Like, what the? My guitar went by me, and it's on fire. <laughs> I just that, that thing looks like it's been through a war, man. It's, you should see it now. That's that's pretty old picture because I see it. I'm still playing like a one of the guitars is a Mesa. And one of the amps is a dual rectifier, which I don't play anymore. Mark Tulse up in Canada says, uh, Hetson and Gina from the Luna Chicks drove me to my SG obsession. Nice. Uh, Darren asks, is that an Evertune bridge? Heck if I know. I think yeah. it's... I think it's called a tutomatic. I don't know what they call that one exactly. Right. Makes sense. Michael DeRay says P90s suck. <laughs> okay. Some yeah. people like swear by them. I mean, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm fine with for recording different things, but. You, I, I like you. You're like, you're sort of like, you're like not infatuated with gear. You're just like, let me get something that works and let's bang on it, right? Yeah, I, I, you know, at one point I was collecting and I had a pretty nice collection of guitars and amps and this and that. I had to sell some of it here and there, but I still have a decent amount. Before we, Ray Hogan did a super chat and he asked, was there a big metal scene in Hawthorne? First off, we're talking about Hawthorne in the late 70s and, and very early 80s here. He says, I seem to remember that. Was there a metal scene in Hawthorne? There was like a, a lot of cover band playing metal-ish and maybe a couple bands but yeah. you know, once i started going going to uh hollywood and, and meeting the guys from black flag and going to the church in hermosa beach where they all hung out all those bands practiced i wasn't really paying attention to what was going on in hawthorne um the black flag nervous breakdown uh single when that came out um, I, I, I did some, when I do my homework, I, I read a funny story about how you guys saw that and you were like, oh, the, the PO box on that was like really close to where you lived. You guys actually went and sort of stalked, you kind of stalked the PO box. Is that right? That is true. After school, we go to the post office in Lawndale, California, <laughs> up to run into them. And we never did, but somehow we found out where they practiced. We went by there and said, hey, we're a young band. Can you help us get some shows? Uh -huh. and, they did, and Black Flag actually played uh, Steve McDonald's junior high graduation party in a house oh. in Hawthorne. And Wow. And, and, and that was, both, that was we both Keith, played. Keith, Greg, the Duke, and Robo? Yes. Or Brian? Or Brian. Uh, Bill, oh, it's Brian. Right? Robo. Yeah, Robo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And... You know, we played a little set, and it's like, oh, yeah, cute guys with the cute little young band, and okay, Black Fight comes on, and Keith is probably, you know, shit-faced drunk in the middle of the day. <laughs> People were terrified. It was great. Um, also, in, in, my, uh, in my research, uh, in my homework, um, I, talking about sort of the demise or, or, or the end of your tenure in, in Red Cross, um, you, you said that um, – I guess Lucky, uh, Lucky Learner uh, drummer tried out and they were down on him because he was wearing a Devo button. 
So they stopped rehearsing and then he quit and you, is that sort of how the circle jerks came about? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, you know, many years later I found out they were intimidated by him because he was actually a real trained musician and none of us were, mm. he was a little bit older than us, you know? Right. But he was a little more, I mean, he dressed more on the little new wave side when he, he came back from UC Santa Cruz. He yeah. had a Devo button. <laughs> a mirror Devo button from what I remember. Yeah. We have a joke. We have a joke on this show. Uh, it comes up a lot about how, you know, when I was in Boston in, in, in 81 and sort of rolling with that early <coughs> Boston crew, SSD control and all that, you know, one time we were walking down the street, a bunch of bunch of the skins and like these, you know, in lack of a better term, you know, the Boston jocks, you know, dr they didn't know what to make of us. So they yelled, you know, fucking Devo. We were, like, we were like, Devo. <laughs> yeah, we, that, that, that was the same here. We get Devo B-52s. Like, <laughs> gee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, you know, I, they made some excuse not why not to practice and I was at some gig at the whiskey and I see them there. I thought you guys were somebody was sick. I forgot who said, hey, I got a fever, I can't play. Yeah, but here I am at the whiskey. Got a gig right? And it's like so I thought today I quit. My version of the story is Keith overheard the conversation. He goes, Fuck those guys, let's start our own band. I know a bass player. I said, Well, I got a drummer. And that's how the circle jerks formed. That's awesome. That's awesome. And is this the original lineup of the Jerks? Boom. Is that the original lineup of the Jerks? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Even Keith, even even Keith looks young there. Yeah. You know. Uh, that's the uh, bathroom at the whiskey. Oof. Wow. Yeah, and, and the shot taken by our friend Ed Ed Culver, who was on the show fairly recently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lucky's a Lucky's a, a drum teacher now, right? He's doing some drum lessons and stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that, that's that's uh, that's great. So so the jerks get rolling, and and speaking of Ed Culver, uh, you know this iconic album gets shot, gets gets recorded and done. Could you give us some perspective on on this recording and? What you know, just that that early era of, of going to record it and stuff. Yeah, well, first of all, back in back in those days, studios were very uh, studio time was expensive to get into something that was pretty decent. To make a long story short, Lucky knew some dude. So there might have been some trading of marijuana for studio <laughs> time, and we recorded it at a. Uh, it was more of like a a voiceover. Studio at a on a movie <laughs> lot that used to, the old Desilu Studios. Oh yeah, sure. It was called yeah. Birdcliff. It was called Birdcliff at the time. Uh huh. So we would go in, you know, after hours because the the engineers could bring in their own projects later. Yeah. Night. Back then, a lot of the studios around twenty four hours. Sure. The young engineers or assistants would bring their friends in, and that's you know we kind of would get a call. And, and, and you you get a call like. Yeah. Like, hey, man, we're open. Come on, get your guys and come in from, from one to five. <laughs> Pretty much exactly like that. That's yeah. Brutal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Paris Mayhew from uh, Cro Mags uh, says, still one of my favorite albums. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah. Now, is there any, this, this, was there any, any true, I heard that this wasn't meant to be a demo that was released as a record, was it? Or was, it, was the idea always for this to be a full length record? It was always an idea to be full length, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, Paulie says, shout out to marijuana. See, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the, the barter system worked back then. Yep. Yeah, that, that's, that's, uh, that's for ab absolutely sure. And uh, who, uh, Bill Jarby asks, who came up with the name? Uh, we were over at Ray Raymond Pettibone's house, mm -hmm. the, you know, the artist, iconic mm -hmm. artist, flyer, art, blah, blah, blah. And we were just going. It was, he had a bunch of books. I think maybe I even been to the parents' house of Greg and, and Pettibone, Greg Ginn and Raymond Pettibone. 
and we were going to this slang dictionary, the American slang dictionary, and looking at some terminology. And uh, we saw the word term circle jerk, which we never heard of. We thought it was ridiculous, and that's a great name for a band. <laughs> what was the early, was the early, I guess the early Circle Jerk set list was basically you, you, you drummed up those songs and a couple of the old Black Flag ones he sang. Is that fair to say? At first, we were kind of playing some of the Black Flag, some of the songs, the music, but with different lyrics. And then we kind of like, well, we should probably change the lyrics, even though we did end up doing Don't Care. It was a Black Flag song originally and Wasted. Changed yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, early that, that was the early set. So we started playing like the, went from like parties to doing some clubs. We had probably the fourteen songs from the group six album and Wild in the Streets, the short version. Got it. You know, here's a photo that I came across. I, I thought this is a. I think it's from eighty one or eighty two. It's a it, great photo. Yeah. Yeah. Any recollection of what this is? I don't remember where that is. But but I see I see Rick Agnew, right? Yes. That is Rick Agnew in the back there. Yeah. I, I, I like those glasses. That, that, that might be Mike Patton from the middle class next to him. Yeah. Right. And Lucky is next to me. And then I forgot her name. Her name is Nikki from the fanzine for Yous. Probably, probably right because if you look, he's all soaking wet. He probably just got off stage. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, yeah. Getting back to the middle class, the first punk show I saw, and they really inspired me to be in a band. Is that right? Middle class opening for the Dickies in July 1978. Somebody, somebody posted that you had a, a Dickies button on in your high school yearbook photo. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I meant to ask you. So, I mean. What was your first con what was your first show? It doesn't have to be punk punk right there. What was the first show you saw music? Like I think might have been Tiny Tim, but the first rock. And I used to I you know we would go to Disneyland and they used to have people perform there like Jackie D. Shannon or something like right. that. Chubby Checker or something, right? Yeah, but the first rock show I said my parents, yeah, I really want to go to see that was Credence because they're the Credence Clearwater Revival, tongue twister. Right. Yeah, don't 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 feel bad. My first show was uh, Jackson Brown running on empty. So that okay. so was Credence, Tony Joe White, and Tower of Power. That was the bill. Oh wow, that's cool. That's probably ten ish. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, soon soon after, I know you guys ended up on the decline of Western Civilization uh, soundtrack. Can right. you tell us about how that came about? Uh, I mean, Keith says Penelope Spears came to uh, to us, to him, go, oh, I want, really want to have, you, have us have you in our movie. And, but they were almost done filming, which that part is true. But I, I kind of remember going up to her office and, or maybe that's the initiation was her, Keith and her talking. And we went up to the office and we were pleading our case why we should be in the movie. Right. And that uh, kind of took us to an a lot of the LA bands to a whole other level. Yeah. And, and you guys, there's a bunch of songs in there, right? It's, uh, there's like four or five songs in there, right? Yeah. You know, we have short songs. You can put more in. <laughs> yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Right. Yeah. But yeah, that, that film was, uh, that film really, uh, exposed. I mean, like even for me, that's the, that's the, kind of the first I saw of bands like Black Flag and, and Circle Jerks. It was like, Oh, wow. It's going off out in California, you know? Yeah. Good stuff. Um, I know that soon after that, you guys you guys went out on the road. And is it safe to say the first thing you guys kind of did in 81, you did just an East Coast tour? Yes, correct. Yeah. Boston, um, Boston down to D.C. Boston down to D.C. And, and that was, um, was, I guess that was 81, 82? Yeah. 1981. Yeah. We kind of okay. based ourselves out of, out of the city. We were staying at this apartment above this Polish meat 
the Polish meat market on uh, 2nd Avenue across right. from where Salka is. Yeah, of course. I, yo, that meat, that Polish meat market is still there, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I go to Vasalka every time I'm in, in, in yeah, New York. It's still there right across the street. Oh, yeah. Yep. You see an apartment above there. And then there was another apartment, you know, because there was like four of us. And the, the guy who was to book the tour said, I don't want anybody partying. And me and Lucky brought some people partying over to the apartment. So we had to go to this other one on St. Mark's that wasn't as nice. You know, old school, like bathtub in the middle of the room. Yeah. You know? A railroad flat, we call it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, yeah. So that's you know, I, I, I directed this, uh, this film, uh, XXX All Ages, XXX, the Boston Hardcore film, which was a, you know, kind of a, a docket of the early Boston Hardcore scene from 81 to 84, basically. But yeah. I got a lot of, I gathered up a lot of material. Uh, this is going back. I, we did that film 10 years ago. And this is sort of before the, the big heyday of, of Facebook and all that. Yeah. And um, I ended up scanning a lot of photos that were never, um, that, you know, we did scanning parties and people came with their flyers and photos. And I ended up with a bunch of photos from people like Phil and Flash and from Bridget Collins as well. And I want to show you a picture of uh, this photo has never been seen before. It was it was deep in my archive. It's from January of eighty one when you guys played the Paradise in Boston. Oh wow! Yeah, right there. Never before seen. Yep. Very nice. Yeah, you guys are doing it right there. Yep. Yep. That's uh. With this Club Fifty Seven T-shirt on, which is on St. Mark's Fifty Seven. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Since this is New York Hardcore, Hardcore Chronicles, we got to throw a little New York in there. Yeah, any chance you get to tie something in, do me a favor and try to tie it in. <laughs> I, I got a, well, I got a funny story of us going around, me and Lucky. We were all kind of going around the Lower East, I mean, the East Village, and uh, spray, oh, wow. spray, spray painting circle jerks. Uh huh. And then me and Lucky were doing it one day, and these fucking people from the neighborhood. Like what the fuck you doing in our you know in our neighborhood, and they fucking they started like following us and they like grabbed our 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 spray cans and fucking broke them and threw them in the street. I'm like okay, we're gonna get our ass kicked. So so we ducked into this this bar. I forget the name of it. It's gone now. The one where they did the Rolling Stones video, waiting on a friend. Yeah, that's the St. Mark's Bar and Grill. That's St. Mark's Bar and Grill. So we went in there and hid for like two hours. Because for a while they were just like circling and try to intimidate us to come out. Uh, it was pretty scary. <laughs> Mike LaRouche asks, is it true the van crashed while on tour? That was in 1983. That was a little bit later. Where Keith hit some black ice and rolled the van. Ooh. Driving back from Texas on a tour. I was not in the van. I flew home. Missed that one. I'm thank God because the pat if somebody would have been in the passenger seat, they might have been seriously injured or killed the way it, it got crushed when it rolled. Here's here's uh th this is dated um New Year's Eve 83, 84. I came across this in the archive, right? This is a a rock hotel show on Jane Street. It was Broken Bones, Circle Jerks, Murphy's Law, and Kilroy. Which, yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, 85, 86, maybe. Um, I have it as, as 80, as 80, uh, New Year's Eve, 83, 84, but I could be wrong. Because what makes sense is that a couple, it seems like two weeks later, and this is, this is just mind blowing, this one, is that it seems like two weeks later, you guys played A7. And that's, that's, Pretty badass. Circle Jerks, Murphy's Law, Urban Waste, Agnostic Front, and A7. That is amazing. Yeah. I wasn't at that one, but. I almost. vaguely remember. I remember doing A7 once where we just played a few songs and Jack Rabbit played drums because Lucky didn't want to play a party or go up. I don't know what happened. He didn't want it. A7 was beneath him. Yeah, I don't know. 
<laughs> Apparently he went back and played it. That's a great yeah. what a lineup, huh? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, what, what, yeah. Shout out to James Drescher and Murphy's Law. Yeah, that's a great, it's a great lineup. We were doing shows at, back in that room uh, up until fairly recently. We got back in the room. You know, Jess, you know, Jesse Mallon is is a co-owner of that vent of that bar now. Yes, I do know that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah so we uh, downstairs you know, we there, right? That's where A seven was. I mean, I'm sure you remember that it was like a war zone back there. Back A7 was like it was like downtown Beirut. Yeah, you didn't you didn't go really you want to go any path way any past that towards Avenue B or C or walk to the park. No, no fucking way. No, 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 no. No, you'd sit in the van. It was like, you know, what was it? I think Roger uh, Roger uh, Moret would say A, A Avenue A A is for A is for adventurous. B is for beware, you know, C is for caution, D is for dead, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I told this funny story in this in this in this book. I was playing there, I was with the high and the mighty, and we were all huddled in the van, you know, outside the door, you know, and, and the place wouldn't start music wouldn't start until at least midnight and wouldn't stop until the sun went up. So, you know, we're all huddled in there, me and all my friends from the Bronx, you know, ten of us in there. It was the first time we played there, and we're, we're like right on the corner of Avenue and Saint Street, and all of a sudden we hear a screech, and this punk rock girl is walking across the street with a big forty ounce and gets hit by a cab and rolls over the hood, over the hood, over the roof, comes down, bottle hits the ground, explodes, and we're like, "Holy shit!" Cab takes off, she staggers to her feet and and and, and staggers into Tompkins Square Park. Yeah. And we were like, oh. wow, we ain't in Kansas anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that was. Yeah, the, uh, Thomas says AF at the bottom of the bill. That's who we're doing. Believe it or not, Thomas, there was a time when Agnostic Front was a new band. <laughs> That's how it works, brother. That's right. So, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, the. Uh, Re, uh, so, 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 you know what? I, yeah, this, I, I know I'm skipping around here, but um, Wild in the Streets, any thoughts on that um, in, in, in retrospect? Yeah, we didn't spend enough time making it because we went into AM studios and we had to make it in like five days, record and mix. So, none of us were the, happy the way it came out, but people seem to love the album nevertheless. In retrospect, yeah, I, I I must say at the time when it came out, I sort of it felt that way to me. You know, it, it felt a little like uh, the guitars were thin. It just didn't have. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I know this was this was a bit later, but um, I saw the I saw the jerks with this lineup, and you guys were absolutely friggin' smoking, man. Oh yeah, with biscuits on drums and Earl on bass. Yeah. Wowies, wowie. It was, uh -huh. Yeah, it was with Chuck Biscuits on drums and, and Earl Liberty on, on bass. And, and you got, I'm playing S, S, SG Jr. with a P90. Hey! Hey, there you go. <laughs> I still have that guitar. <laughs> yeah. Was that, was that lineup short-lived? Yeah, maybe a year, year and a half. Smoking, man. You guys, you guys, you guys were great. That was that. What was that? 85, 86? No, that was 83, 84. Okay. Yeah, it was great. When we went to tour for Golden Shower of Hits, it was this lineup. Right. That was great. Playing with biscuits, man. Come on now. Yeah. Hey, whatever happened to that guy? Actually, actually Joey has one of his old drum kits from Danzig. That Who he does? Plays. Oh, Joey does? Yeah. He brings that, plays that sometimes with us. Or some, some of the drum kit. Chuck does. Biscuits just took himself out of circulation, huh? Yeah. He just, just took himself out of the mix, man. Absolutely. Um, let me uh, let me uh, do a sponsor break here. Let's take a, a break for a couple minutes. Let me shout out some sponsors, and we'll come back, and, and we will continue on our quest, okay? All right. All right. What's happening? As you may or may not know, this is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, 
and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, The TFM Vinyl Distro, Chacho's Tacos, Generation Records, Grunge and Grime Soap Company, and 126 Hardcore Clothing. It's a streetwear brand for restless individuals who don't compromise. They are about being positive, spontaneous, and true to yourself. For years, they experimented with several printing methods and materials and collaborated with a large number of designers and illustrators, always giving room for fresh perspectives while retaining the hardcore attitude. Don't care what they say. We got that attitude. Get in touch with them. Ramp up your game at www.126clothing.com. Come on now. DTFM Vinyl Distro is a record store that specializes in underground music, punk, ska, hardcore, metal, and more. Located in the heart of lovely Far Fargo, North Dakota's Industrial District, shop in person or online at www.dtfmvinyldistro.com, where the motto is death to false metal. Uh, last but not least, how about Generation Records? Since 1992, Generation Records has been a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues, soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as T-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections and music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area. Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com. Follow them on Facebook and on Instagram. Want to mention uh, the next next four shows for those that are interested in this sort of thing. Um, coming up on Wednesday, June 29th, the day after my birthday, Mr. Bob Riley will be on the show. Then Sunday, July 3rd, there will be a Godfather film retrospective with Don Capria, who wrote the book. Columbo, the unsolved murder. He also is a drummer. He played in Scarhead. Then we got Johnny from Street Dogs, Roger Moret and the Disasters, The Bruisers, True Intentions, and currently playing in Slapshot. This will be a cool show. And if you don't know, from Converge on Sunday, June 17th, Nate Newton will be on. Also, Jesuit, Old Man Gloom, Doom Riders, Cave In, and he did a little stint in the Cavalera Conspiracy. So lots of of good shows coming up. I'm going to be this, good God, is it this Friday? Holy shit, it is. This Friday, I will be in Berlin, Germany, signing copies of my book, The New York Hardcore Chronicles, Volume 1, 1980 to 1989, at Cortex Records. That's this Friday, June 3rd at 6 p.m. If you are in Berlin, come on down. Love to see you. Um, funny you should ask what I am doing in Germany. I am actually going to be on my way to screen my new film in Göttingen. Am I pronouncing that right? Göttingen? Göttingen? Uh, Germany. The Jews in the Blues European premiere. There'll be a Q&A with moi. And Robert Dush Music and Nicole Weinburn, Wenburn, excuse me, um, the executive producers of the film. And uh, that should be a great evening if you are in that part of the fatherland. Come on, come on through. Um, want to mention the next show at the Bowery Electric is Sunday, June 26th. It is free, it is all ages, it is sewage. Blackout Shoppers, it will be our maiden voyage, incendiary device, inhuman, and sworn enemy. If it's free, it's for me, Sunday, June 26th. Really looking forward to that. And then, of course, the one after that is Sub-Zero, Brick by Brick, Kings Never Die, Dead Crew and Mad Mulligans. That's Sunday, July 24th. All free, right next to the old Great Gilda Sleeves, a block away from the old CBGBs. Sunday, August 14th, it is the Run Amok Fest. Run Amok, you schmuck. With RBNX, United Blood NYC, featuring Sid, The Kid, Necrotic Society, Damn Your Eyes, The Car Bomb Parade, The Pride of Staten Island in Rage, and 
Leeway NYC. So that will be going down as well. Um, and then let me just mention that hopefully I get back from Europe. If I don't, this show will be happening regardless. The New York Hardcore Chronicles proudly presents the Back to the New York Hardcore Roots Music Series in Tompkins Square Park. That's right, kids. Clank your chains. Count your change. Fire is murder. Cropsy. Silence equals death. Enziguri, Enziguri and Rebelmatic in our beloved Tompkins Square Park on June 12th. I really hope that uh, I can get back from Germany and Israel. If I get stuck over there like the way Sid the Kid did, I'd be, I'm going to be bummed, man. Be stuck in the Middle East. Don't get nobody breathe on me over there because I can't get sick. You fucking see me, don't breathe on me. Don't even come near me. How's that? If you see me in Germany, you see me in the Middle East, don't even come near me because I got to get back for this show. Imagine the Middle East, that was <laughs> fucking breathing on me, man. I'm sick already just thinking about it. You know? Fucked. Yeah. Yes, it is going to play. I will, Paris. I'll say hi to Dave from Cortex. I'm, I'm excited to do a little signing in the store, you know? Um, Drew, you thought you were in Sweden for a minute. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm actually traveling through Sweden. From Germany to Tel Aviv, I got a stop off in Sweden. So, so there you go. Um, that said, um, let's bring our guests back on. Hey, Sid the Kid, where are you, man? Are you going to come back, Sid the Kid? We'll see. Let's bring our guest back on, Mr. Greg Hudson. I'm back. I didn't realize it was two hours, but whatever. I, I've got nothing to do because I'm just hungry. But the hey, next commercial break, I ate some saltines. <laughs> yeah, that'll help. Um, yeah, we'll, 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 it goes fast, believe me. Yes, yeah, so I'm having a good time. I'm not complaining. It'll go fast. Yeah. Let me bring on let me bring on our good friend Matt Gray. What's up, Matt? What's up, gentlemen? What's up, Greg? How are you? Doing great. Is it true that you have a t shirt of the day to show us? Uh yeah, absolutely. So, Greg, I got this t shirt in the late eighties, and I don't know if it's a bootleg. I don't remember where I got it, but it's an original from the late eighties. Pretty gross, I know. Work with it. So that's the front. And that's and that's the back. Now I don't know if you guys remember all of your merch over the years, but I mean, I have no idea. Definitely late eighties. I might have got it from seeing you guys at City Gardens in Jersey. I, I can't remember, but it's obviously. I used to wear this in high school, and I graduated nineteen ninety. So late eighties, <laughs> I got it somewhere. Yeah, I can't remember if that's a bootleg or not. I want to say it might be a bootleg, but. Gotcha. I kind, of remember, I kind of remember maybe we did that on the front. People were bootlegging. People were bootlegging circle jerk shirts back then. Oh yeah, since almost from day one, it seemed like. Oof. Wow, wow. I'm um, glad to still have that. That's for sure. What's going on with under the armpits of that thing? What do you sweat? What do you sweat? Kerosene, dude. What? What do you? What do you mean? It's from the late '80s, man. It's come on. I, I mean. Are you I was human? a guy in the pit. I was a guy in the pit, man. Sweating. Not not like the rest of us that were just on stage uh, taking <laughs> photo ops, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, here's here's a tie-in. Uh, this photo here is a shot from CBGB's. Um, actually, I have a clip of this. Hold on. You know what? L let me risk getting the whole show. Let me risk getting the whole show shut down by, by posting this. And this, we have a special guest who's going to sing this next number with us. And she's a favorite of ours. And her name is uh, Debbie Gibson. Yes, that's Debbie Gibson, former teen pop star who later took the stages at Broadway and London's West End, now on stage at CBGB's with the Circle Jerks. If we had Neil Young on our record, that would give us a lot of, like, alternative credibility. 
And I don't know what kind of credibility this gives them, but it definitely mainstream. is hysterical. Bubblegum. Mainstream. Hey, now, watch it, watch it. I think it was a natural. Wow. <laughs> did that did that really happen? And Matt, w w here's a shot from that. You said you were there, Matt? I was yeah, I was on stage left for that. Yeah. Out in the pit. Nice. Yep. Yeah. I think it was ninety-five, maybe. Nineteen ninety five, anybody got a date yeah, a year on it? I think it was that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. She she was dating the guy that produced the album we we recorded. And that's which how record, we, which record was that? Oddities, abnormalities, and curiosities. Ah, right. Mike Doc says that record I was goes there. for a lot of money, by the way. I wonder why. I don't know. They were never really happy with that one either. <laughs> that goes why does for that a go lot for a lot of money, money Matt? Like, because it's vinyl. Yeah, no. Um, I don't know about the vinyl. I've seen the CD go for a lot of money on eBay, and and I, I had the copy years ago. Somehow I lost it. I have no idea where it is. That's one of the things I lost. Yeah, Mercury did not do much with that record. <laughs> oh, that that was on Mercury. Yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good graveyard for bands to 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 go die. Mercury and MCA, right? Like, yeah. I, I had a friend on MCA that used to call it Musicians Cemetery Association. You know, that's funny. Or the Music <laughs> Cemetery of America. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's rough. You know what I like? I like the I I, I mm. like this uh of course this is the artwork on this record that's that's ed repka right who yeah who, who did uh of course is well known for the megadeth uh all the megadeth stuff but yeah ed rep who i see he does the chiller theater circuit and i <coughs> we always see him every time and and uh you know he has his stuff laid out you know so yep is that right you guys broke up on that tour was that was that the end of it of the uh, oddity store, yes. So how did how did the jerks come to an end the first time around? Was it was it why why did you guys tap out? The first time, yeah. Uh, did, was it was was it around that time uh, th that you guys took a break? Uh, we took a break from nineteen ninety to like to to ninety four ish. Yeah. Uh, I. I it just kind of just fizzled. Nobody was motivated to write, and there was some yeah. internal crap with the band, this and that. <clears throat> but on the Oddities tour, I'm the one who, who quit because I was not having fun because we were on tour promoting a record and nobody knew we really had a record. That sucks. Yeah. Well, In retrospect, I probably should have finished the tour, but I was. Be. Did you quit the middle of the tour? Yeah. Oh wow! You just you just you just pulled the ripcord and bailed. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not not my best. Not proud of that moment. That happens. We were all young. It was a young. Yeah. And we all do shit like that. Yeah. If I may be so bold to ask, who did they get to replace you? They didn't. Oh, oh the whole thing just the whole thing just. Yeah. A I, mean, halt. I was. I was spreading myself too thin between bad religion, circle jerks, and uh, having a young child, you know, and it just, and I'm, I'm out there like, what am I doing this for, you know? The, yeah. nobody, and of course, I was a little selfish, didn't think about everybody else, but to be young and dumb. Hey, it's rock yeah. and roll, you know, it's okay yeah. to be, it's, it's rock and roll, it's okay to be selfish and fuck everyone else over. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, especially in 1990, right? Yeah. I mean, you know. Um, hey, Matt, thanks a lot, bro. Absolutely, uh, thank you, guys. Anything you want to add? Uh, any, 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 uh, any perspective? Any circle jerk stuff? Uh, Lucky learner. Lucky learner. No, yeah, he the guy's a god on drums. Absolutely, all the drummers you guys have had over the years, I've seen multiple inclinations of different drummers and myself being a drummer it's you, you have you have great rhythm section with those drummers crush it you know what i mean yeah but i appreciate that it's lucky lehrer not learner i just want to say if you maybe oh, okay friend lehrer <laughs> did, 
Lehrer. L e h r e r. So Chuck Biscuit played with you guys then. Yeah. Years back, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, got ya. Gotcha. I wasn't around for that, so that's for sure. Probably. I saw that. that. It was but... dope. Yep. Wow. All right, Maddie. I'll cool. see you later. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks guys. Take care. Right. Yep. Now I feel like a heel. Lucky Lehrer. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Let's talk. Let's let's talk briefly about this band here. Um, you played in Bad Religion on like fourteen studio records. That was quite quite a run. You know, I, you know some type people ask me how many records did you play, have you been on? I don't know. It's a lot. Fourteen, yeah. Apparently, I, I gave I gave it a shot today and sort of. Yeah, and that's just the studio ones. I don't think that that's no, that's not the EPs or the right. Christmas records or shit like that. You know, live live stuff. But mm -hmm. um, you you were pretty much involved with them from the very beginning, right? You played on a little bit on the first record, right? I was just friends with them. I played on one song, yeah, right. And then joined in 80, 1984. Yeah. Mark Toll says Hetson even played on Hell Could Be Any Worse. Yeah, you played out you played what on part three, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then and then you joined the band when they got back together and did Suffer, right? Correct. Yeah. That's kind of when all the original members came back at Suffer. We did an EP before that. Oh, was that back to the known, right? Back to the known, yeah. Hey, yo, nothing for nothing, but Suffer's a great fucking record, bro. Thank you. Yeah, we were, it we really were. is, man. And 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 that record. Correct me if I'm wrong. Really, sort of realigned things for Bad Religion and really put you guys in a forward moving direction. Correct. Correct. Yeah, everyone's like suffers one of the finest records ever <laughs> released. People people love that record. Um, and uh, yeah, what was that? And it was suffer, and then. Um, was generator after that, or not no, recipe for no hate. control? No control. Another great. Those were all great records. Yeah. Um, fond memories of that run. Yeah, well, kind of, I, I was kind of lucky. Well, well, uh, at that time, you know, Bad Religion was kind of a part time band. We wouldn't we didn't tour much. A couple weeks a year or a month out of the year, people were doing other stuff. But as kind of circle jerks were imploding. The, Bad religion was kind of taken off, so I, I was kind of the gods blessed me with that, going from one popular band to another. So I got you know really lucky. Yeah, and and you were there for that ride when, I guess when epit when epit when when punk rock came into vogue again. <laughs> and you know, we came safe because thank thank you Offspring, thank you Green Day. Who would have thunk? I've told the story on this show many times, a quick abbreviated version. When I was working with Biohazard, we were walking to Warner Brothers in the Valley, and there was a band playing on a flatbed truck. And I was like, God, those guys suck. And, and you're like, what the fuck are these guys trying to do? And we go in and we're at this meeting and, you know, big wig at Warner Brothers, you know, we're going to break two bands this year, Biohazard and Green Day. And we're like, who the fuck's Green Day? And, and they were like, the band that was playing in front on the flatbed truck. And we were like, what? They sucked. <laughs> we brought, no, we listen. brought, we brought bad. We, we bad religion brought them out on a tour as openers before Dookie, uh -huh. and then you know they were the opener, and the place would be like one third full of like young kids, mostly girls, and we're like we knew something big because they just got signed to Warner's, waiting, right. waiting for the job. We we. And we signed them up to be our, our opener in our European tour, on the European tour. Uh -huh. And they just exploded. But they were totally cool. They didn't ask for any money, even though we got bumped up to way bigger venues. So I kind of re respect those guys for that. They, hey, listen, they, they could have bailed up. You know, we could headline. We don't, you don't need to do this. And truth be told, that record's great. But, you know, at the yeah, time, just... Yeah. Listen, I'm the guy I'm the guy who was like, thought the Beastie Boys, like, sucked, and they were never going to go anywhere, you know? Right. So... You know, mm -hmm. I'm also the guy that when, when we did, when me and Paris Mayu did the 
did a super cat video with Biggie Smalls in it. He was like, this guy is a talent. He's going to be huge. And I'm like, really? So, <laughs> you know. That's why we're not record executives, right? Yep. <laughs> you know, no clue. Uh, what is this one? Paris Mayhew says, Greg L. Duce. Mm -hmm. And I shared a cab after meeting on the sidewalk outside the Felt Forum after Slayer Danzig. A journalist was hounding me for an interview, so I said, pay for this cab and you can interview me for the length of the ride. He agreed and off we went. That's an amazing story. El Duce from the Mentors. Oof. Yeah. Let Chris Hoffman says, Greg, you were part of the album Into the Unknown. Great album. I was not on that. I, would, I have no, nothing to do with that record, actually. Into the unknown. That that talk about rare records, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, they kind of buried it. They don't. Yeah. They, the only time they re-released it was on the box set, I think. Yeah, uh, I, and it, it, it's a softer, more understanding world now. They could they could put it back out again. You know. It doesn't make sense to me, but what do I know? Yeah, man. Against the grain is the one. <coughs> I, I, I. That's a good one. That, yeah. That's 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 a, that's uh that's a good. Do you remember um, when? We went to Argentina, Biohazard and, and Bad yeah, Religion. I do. And, in 93, oh, was it? It was 93. Yeah, I do. It was a, it was an, a great trip, man. It was. It was great. It was, uh, we, we, um, it was Biohazard and Bad Religion playing Obras Arena in Argentina. It was like a big indoor. It was like it's a it big like, place. It's like a basketball arena, maybe. Yeah. 7,500 capacity or something. And it was packed and the people were stoked and it was biohazard and bad religion and, and Argentina. It was such a great trip. And, and the and people were, right? People were camped out in front of the hotel, like night and day. It was nuts. It was like, what are we, people greeting us at the airport, like 100 I kids. I still tell that story when we got off the plane. Yeah. Like, like, it's like that scene in, 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 in the young Frankenstein. We got off the plane and there was all this cheering and we were like, we're like, who are they, who are they cheering for? We're like, what? They're like, Oh shit. It's us. It was nuts. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It was, that was a great, that was a great trip. And you guys, you guys went back a couple times after that. Yeah. Right? Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that, that's, uh, so, you know, so, uh, the, the bad religion hand plays out eventually. And and we don't particularly need to get into the weeds, but but you move on you move on from there. Uh, the interesting thing you turned up and and I came up and did a song with you guys at a certain point was punk rock karaoke. How did that come about? I I think it was like maybe it was early '90s. A friend of mine who owned a, a restaurant in LA was going to do a a party for his the anniversary of his restaurant he goes i want to do punk rock karaoke and I'm like, well, there's no there's no karaoke songs for punk rock where well, are you gonna find the machine that has all that on there because no I, I want to put together a live band can you do that can you help you with that i'm like that's a brilliant idea and that's how, kind of how it was born so i called up eric melvin and then he was friends with the uh, derrick o'brien who used to be in social distortion he would always come into the restaurant mm -hmm. And then we kind of had had a rotating cast for a couple of years, and we had sometimes Bob Mother's Bob from Devo. Oh, that's a, oh, I didn't know that. That's a good yeah. one. Jennifer Finch played a little bit with us. Lucky played a few songs on the original time we did it. And it was kind of a you know a mishmash of different people. And we kind of thought, oh man, we should we should do this like in clubs and take it out and you know do something. It's a lot of fun. Did uh. Did anybody like did, like a, a, anybody show up and 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 and, and ever and, and I'm sure and like kind of mind blowing like other other than when other than when I did it with you guys and, and oh, of course. Like, other than when I did it at the Bowery Electric and we did I love living in a city but anybody else <laughs> oh, anybody stand out I don't know I've had a lot of cool people you know yeah. come up from other bands the, the funniest thing one for me being a hockey fan was. We were doing it on the Warp Tour one year in Montreal, and this guy comes up and sings Wild in the Streets, I believe. And then he was like, he's great for the Montreal Canadiens. 
he's a goalie and he was like a rookie. It was Felix, not Felix Poppin, it was uh, Jose Theodore. So wow. he came up, he came up to uh, and sang a song his rookie year, coming into his second year. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. And where did that happen? In Montreal? Montreal, yeah. Warp Tour. Oh, was on, oh, you did the punk rock karaoke thing on the Warp Tour? Yeah, we did it a couple times on the Warp Tour, yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't really know that. That must have been fun doing that outdoors. But when, when you do it, when you do it on something like the Warp Tour, how do you schedule people to come up? Do you just get up there and go, "Who wants to come up and sing one?" Pretty much, we'd have like the, the couple bands before we would go on, and we'd run side one of the side stages. We'd have a sign up sheet and try to get people to sign up. It was challenging, but we'd have a lot of people from other bands and uh, what's it called then and. The crew members, the stagehands and stuff, production people would, would help out, come up and sing. It was kind of challenging getting enough singers. Yeah, because I, I, I would think that you might, hit a, you might hit a wall, like all of a sudden you're standing up there and you're like, hey, who wants to come up next? Ah, well, you know? Luckily, it's only a 30 minute set. Yeah. RS70 says, in memory of Steve Soto. Yeah, for yes, sure. Sir. Big Steve, man. Mm -hmm. Yep. I like I like this era. This was sort of like the the uh, the psychedelic circle jerks era where everybody had long hair for the most part. Yep. <laughs> it looks like the LA street scene right before the riot. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and that's that's the that's it's you three guy it, that's the band now. It's you three guys and just a different drummer, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Dave Martin says, I did Blitzkrieg, I did Greasy Bop in Lawrence, Kansas on the 98 Warp Tour. All right. Nice. Yeah, that was the first time we did it on the Warp Tour. That was the first time I did Warp Tour in 98. Yeah. I mean, you must have done Warp Tour between Bad Religion and, and this thing a bunch of times, huh? Yeah, five ish, six or something. Yeah. Got it. Good amount. Got it. Let's, um, let's do this because I know you're hungry. Um, yeah. Let's, I also want to wish you a happy, you said your birthday is on the 28th? Yours is the 29th, right? It is, yeah. Well, happy birthday, fellow cancer. And my dad's the 30th, bro. Wow, crazy. Yeah, and you know who else is the 30th? Roger Moret from Agnostic Front. Really? Okay, who knew? And, and Mike Tyson. Yeah. I know John John Feldman is the 29th from Goldfinger. We have the same. Wow. <laughs> yeah, 28th is a good one. Um, oh, hey, there's, hey, there's our mutual friend, John Tampkin. John What's Tampkin. up, John? Hey, John. Yeah. We, yeah need to do dinner. we need to do dinner soon. I know we've been talking about that for months. <laughs> is John back in L.A. these days? Yes, he is. Yeah. Cool. Oh, Chris Hoffman's the 28th. Hey, we're right. we're, 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 there you go. Go figure. Yeah, June babies. <sighs> Cancer. All right. So, hey, let me take my last sponsor break. We'll come back and we'll take some questions from around the world, okay? Sounds good. I'm going to get some water. <laughs> go ahead. Make a break for it. What's happening? You know what this is. And you know why we're here. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. And we are sponsored by Blah, 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 and Grunge and Grime Soap Company. They're a modern day soap company with a rock and roll spirit inspired by the music we grew up with. Music is in our soul from 80s hair metal to 90s grudge and everything in between. We believe in being true to yourself no matter what pop culture tells you to be. This is Grunge and Grime Soap Company. Hey, um, we got to get some good text together. Um, Michael, reach out to me. Let's, let's get, I'm just reading this off what you sent me. We got to pull something together. Where is my grunge? Yeah, here. Woo! Black Forest. What do you know about that? What am, I, what am I even wasting my time talking to you? I should be in the shower rubbing this on my body. God damn. Also, by the way, Organic Grill has moved to 133 one, one, 3rd Street, corner of 6th Avenue. Um, waiting for the opening date. We'll get, uh, we wish Vlad all the best. We love Organic Grill. We can't wait for them to open up once again. Um, 
Cortex book signing June 3rd in, in Germany. I got German and Israel screenings. We got the Tompkins Square Park show June 12th. Bowery Electric shows June 26th, July 24th, August 14th. Also, we're going to announce September 11th and 16th. I want to shout out all the Facebook pages that support this show. Thank you very much for spreading the word. Um, there, If you're watching this in rerun, there is a subscribe button right there. Please subscribe to the channel so you get alerts. Also, pick up your communication device. Follow me slash the show on Instagram at Stone Films NYC. Um, also, please support the show. There's a Patreon page uh, as well as a um, uh, AOL, uh, um, a PayPal page. But please join Patreon. This show always needs support. Not as many people are watching as they used to. People aren't locked inside. So this show must continue. And uh, Mike Reed. How about you, Mike Reed? Uh, big ups, Drew. Great show. Enjoyed meeting you at the Nancy. Yes, Mike. Thank you. Yo, Brenda Cater. Thank you. Uh, NYHC for Life uh, Facebook page. Thank you so much for supporting the show and letting me post on there and, and letting... Uh, bring the new band to Boston. We will. We will. We're playing Albany. That's pretty close, right? What are we doing? We're playing Albany. Where, where's my... Uh, where's my... We're playing Albany with... Um, where is it? Madball, right? Here we go. We are playing Upstate Incendiary Device with Madball on August 12th. So you people in Boston, if you feel adventurous, come on over to Albany. There it is. Madball, Death Before Dishonor, Incendiary Device. It's going to jump off tonight. Wrong move, downswing, and cropsy. So come on through. We are actually leaving. We are breaking with tradition. And playing outside the New York City subway system. So there you go. Um, yeah, road trip. Yeah, yeah, D. Good. That's going to be good. Looking forward to it. Yes, Busky's part of, of Hoya's podcast. They got a new podcast happening. This is true. Um, any questions for our guest? And you want to support the show, please feel free to do a super chat. It comes in in color. I can't miss it. It goes right up. So you're loving this one, John. Good. We're getting somewhere here. Any questions for our guest, Mr. Greg Hetson of Circle Jerks, Bad Religion, Red Cross fame, please post. Now's the time. Even if you've posted already, post again so I can see it. All right. Let me clear the deck of all this stuff. Here we go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, Greg Hudson. Hey, man. Yeah, I'm back. I see. Uh, did we ever play Lemores? Yeah, we played Lemores in Brooklyn. Yeah. Hold on, you're getting ahead of yourself. Oh yeah, look at that. Lemores, where'd you see? Oh, all right. Paulie says, did you did Circle Jerks ever play Lemore in Brooklyn in the '80s? Any memories of Lemore? Yeah, uh, we played there a couple times. I think I just remember. Uh, being amazed that a bunch of people that had long hair into metal were coming to see, see us play. It was kind of cool. It was an interesting club. Yeah. Yeah. I was, you know, recently it's come up of me doing a, a, a document, a Lamore documentary, but it's always sort of been started already. And there's a lot of, a lot of intricate run-ins there that, that I don't really want to be involved in. So, but that place has a great story to tell. Hopefully someday, uh, is that right? John says they played Lamore and Sheer Terror opened. Okay. Who's nicer, Mike Watt or Keith Morris? Oh, I can't answer that question. <laughs> They're different personalities. They're both nice. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, you know what, Matt Gray? Why don't you come on? And Matt, answer, ask the question yourself, bro. Um, Greg, do you have a favorite? Bad religion record and a least favorite bad religion record. Oh, I guess. I don't know. I really like <coughs> Against the Grain a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah. So Steph was pretty pretty solid because it was the big comeback. Yeah, it was great. Uh, great record. Least favorite? Uh, I I don't know. You know, I always thought Generator was a little slow. Love that record. Wow. Yeah, a lot of people did. I just thought, I don't know. At that point, I'm like, eh, I don't know so many songs. Eh. I used to watch you guys on Warp Tour every day because I was a drum tech for a band, and I would just watch Brooks and just stand next to him and just drool with how talented that drum He's incredible. Yeah, he's amazing. I've been lucky to play with some great drummers. <coughs> I tried to get him to teach me drum lessons, but it's Warp Tour. You get too busy and everything. So Yeah. Yeah. I saw Brooks Brooks's brother play many times with Frank Zappa. Chad. Chad yeah. Wackerman. I saw him play many times with Frank Zappa, and he was pretty great himself. Yeah. Great musical family. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Drummers. Thanks, Matt. You got it. Thank you. See ya. Um, first time I saw the jerks, Keith was wearing a back brace. I sort of vaguely remember that. Yeah, he broke his back. And then he got on stage and performed, huh? Oof. A few months later, yeah. I guess, you know. Show must go on. Show, show must go on. Um, Greg, best L.A. punk band? Past or present, or oh, let's rephrase that. So we're not a some couple of favorite LA punk bands. Uh, I have to throw the Dickies in there because they were the first punk band I ever went to go see. Uh, X Black Flag with Keith mm. primarily. Uh, weirdos. Oh wow! Yeah, don't forget the. Did, did, did you did you ever meet um, Darby Crash? Yeah, the, germ the Germs were a great band, too. They were just, just pure chaos, and most of the time they sucked. But it yeah. was just, uh, the anarchy that ensued. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I learned a lot of guitar. Uh, Mark says, uh, Mark Tulch up in Canada, I learned a lot of guitar copying your riffs. Read your thoughts on the Bad Religion book. Will we get a Hedson book? Uh, had to book. I don't know. Uh, what were my thoughts on the beer? I didn't. I didn't participate in the bad religion book. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if they mentioned that fact in the book or not. Mm. But uh, I don't know. People keep telling me you should write a book, and I, you know, maybe I'm not very motivated. <laughs> it's easy these days. You can like dictate it into into yeah. a program. You know, it's pretty easy. I hear and you get like a ghostwriter to do all that. You get someone to help yeah. co-write. And, well, come maybe on, I don't ask around. Uh, maybe I should. Yeah, maybe I. Yeah. I don't know. It's such a hassle. <laughs> it's a big hassle. Anyways. John Wolf asks, "What are your memories of doing Repo Man?" And isn't Emilio Estevez a big fan? Yeah, he was a fan uh, doing Repo Man. <laughs> I remember we had this these managers at the time, and they said. Oh, you're not getting paid enough. You shouldn't do it. And we're like, no, we need to be in this movie. And we insisted to do the movie. But uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. That's where we, I guess we first met Xander, but we don't remember. So we were, we were miserable in those suits. It's like a really hot day in a little trailer, no air conditioning. We didn't realize when they say, you be there at like 10 a.m., you sit there and wait and wait for hours and hours until it's time for you to. Yeah, it's brutal. Prove your thing. And, we almost walked off the set. We're like, fuck this. This is not fun. They didn't want to give us any food. And then Alex Cox was like, no, no, they're not extras. They're in the movie. Get fucking mad. Go to catering. <laughs> right, well, here's, here's just, just, here's another old Ed Culver photo that, that uh, I just like to post that thing before. But, uh, oh, yeah. I think that's, that's definitely my pickup truck in the background. Is that right? Dots and pickup, yeah. A dots and pickup. That's like that's like what Al Qaeda drives around the desert, like dots and pickup trucks, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He threw the beer in his in his pocket. Is that but, right? Chris Valdez asked, ask him about when the jerks played with Alcatraz. Is that right? Yeah, we did a show with, it was uh Alcatraz, us and Leatherwolf. Oh my. Leatherwolf played. It was cool. Whatever. They were a pretty cool band. 
We used to practice in the same spot with them for a while. And then uh, we played, and there was kind of a pit. Even It wasn't a huge crowd. It was such a weird build. It didn't draw very well. But there was a pit, and then Alcatraz would not play the show. They just bailed out. Didn't play. I'm assuming that was like Alcatraz with like Graham Bonnet and and – and either Steve Vai okay. or Ingve Malmsteen. Ingve Malmsteen, yeah, yeah. Scalloped frets and all, you know. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Michael Circle Jerks, one of the last bands to play the Channel in Boston. Okay. Who knew? Who knew? Yeah. Great club. Yeah, I, I, I have some fond memories of my tenure up in Boston. Uh, we actually, when I was in the High and the Mighty, we opened for the Misfits there in 94, one of the last Misfits shows. We saw uh, Black Flag there. Saw a great Joan Jett show there in 81. <laughs> nice. Yeah, she came out and ripped. It, it was really good. Um, did Greg ever get into any thrash metal bands in California? Thrash metal ever speak to you? No, not really. I do remember doing a show once way or like early, like Slayer was pretty new. He did a, a benefit for a uh, after hours club slash art gallery, the Zero One Gallery. Mm. Uh, it's the Blasters, Slayer, and Spinal Tap. Wow. That's an eclectic bill. Yeah. And <laughs> Slayer guys were like fans and gave us cassettes of the record. It was about to release. Michael Duray asks, any new circle any new circle jerks albums in the works? Not of yet, no. I mean, you, you know, let me answer, let me let me answer that for you, okay? Listen, it's a miracle they're out on the road fucking playing. What do you think they can fucking other than that, they're just trying to get that done. How was that? <laughs> no, no, but you know, we We've never got a lot better. A lot better. There's like been no drama between. Is that anybody. right? Yeah, it's like been so relaxed. Everybody's having fun, and you could see see Keith is almost smiling in that photo that you you posted. That's I mean, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, here here's another. Well, this is a, this is. Oh, this is Irving Plaza. This is a Stephen Messina, um, photo from when when you guys played Irving Plaza. Yeah, that's that's okay. a little that's already like amazing. That's already what I guess that's the last time you guys played before you went on hiatus before you just came back. Yeah, like yeah. fifteen years ago ish. Yeah. What happened to that SNFU shirt? I think my second ex wife stole it from me. Damn it. <laughs> you and those ex wives, man. Me too. You know? Before I forget, speaking of that, I've had two wives. I got I got my shameless self promo promotion or shameless shameless Please. nepotism. I got to do my nepotism thing and say, hey, check out my daughter's music called Power Violets. Two. Power Violets, one word. Power Violets, one word. Yeah, uh huh. Her name's Violet, so it's more like indie rock, but she's been playing a lot around New York. Brooklyn. Is that right? Yeah, she's yeah. In New York. Yeah, she's in Brooklyn. How old is she? She's 25. She lives in bed -Stuy. Do or die. Yeah. <laughs> I've not seen her new apartment, but yeah, she's doing well, doing the music thing. That's awesome. And, yeah. and does she play uh, guitar? She plays guitar and sings, writes all the music. She is Power Violets, pretty much. Wow. Yeah. And she, and she has to slog through life. She's Greg Hetson's daughter playing guitar in, 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 in a rock band. Yeah, and and she makes fun of like, how people give her shit. You got to check her out. She does these hilarious fake music documentary videos like on TikTok. Let me, hold on. Let me look, see if there's anything. Power violence? Yeah. Yeah. She And she gets all the facts wrong. She'll like be talking about, you know, somebody and, and have the wrong pic, it, picture up. And people think she's like, oh, this stupid kid, she doesn't know what she's talking about. And people like, you know, don't get it's a joke. We don't think it's funny. I, I think it's pretty brilliant. Oh my, is this your daughter? Hold on a second. Yeah, I gotta do this scene with the nepotism. No, she no, makes cool. it's it's cool. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, I'm I'm a proud dad. I saw it like two months ago when we were like kind of in a holding pattern when Keith was sick with COVID. She played a show in Brooklyn and she fucking killed it. The band was really good. I'm trying to 
there's a couple pictures up here. I'm trying to uh, let me find a picture. No power violence. No boys. Is that her? Is that That's her album? Yeah, first time. Yeah. Wow, she's out there. She's doing it, man. That's cool. Yeah, she's doing it. Yeah, yeah. Where did I go wrong? Damn it. <laughs> it's funny how. Oh, here we go. All right, I got a picture. I managed. Uh, I managed to download a shot. It might be a little not high quality, but yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Violet Hudson. Boom. Right. That's her. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Good for you, man. Oh, Christopher. People know Greg's daughter is hilarious. Yeah, Who would have dunk it? I know people like, you know, I, everybody it, seems to notice no boys, power violets. Wow. That, it's an excellent album. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Power violence. <laughs> See, that, you have to play on that, of course. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, good for you, buddy. That's great. All right. Now back to me. Yeah. Uh, enough. I, uh, fucking kids. Whatever. I love you, but not that much. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um. We see Ed at Chiller. Which Ed are we talking about? Ed Rep. Which Ed are we talking about? A story, Lou. Ed Repka. We see him all the time. Hey, oh, and, and and the women of the pit even know. I'm like the last one to know, and I'm the fucking host of this show. Yeah, you know? yeah. Bro, why are we talking to you? We should be talking to your daughter. Yeah, you should. Yeah, We're talking about all this old shit. Who cares about old punk rock shit? You know, what, I hear you. <laughs> what's happening now? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. You know? Did she? I guess she sort of inherited. Did but did she get that? Did she get that hair? That's the question. Uh, she's got, well, she's not losing her hair like I did. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, let's take one or two more. Uh, having, having wicked, smart, and creative kids is a punk rock parent accomplishment. I agree. Yeah, I'm very proud of her. Good for you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Okay. All right. What's your favorite Turbo Negro song? Why? Are you a Turbo Negro fan? Why would somebody yeah. yeah. Oh, you are? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Favorite one? I don't know. Maybe Midnight Nambla. Huh. I like that one. That's great. I have to think when you're hungry, too. I haven't eaten yet today except for some saltines. Listen, guys like you and me, it's good to, that we starve. Yeah, I've, I've been down with just like stomach problems for the last like couple of weeks after food poisoning. And it's ooh, yeah. I'm still on that road. You get po you get food poisoned on the road or at home? No, I got it. You know, on the way to circle jerks practice. It, oh. My favorite, my my used to be my favorite go to fast food place, Jack in the Box. Oh, and it's kind of fucked me up. I mean, I'm not, I've gotten better, but it's just kind of like not quite right. It's fine, slowly going better. Finally got, you know, the doctors tell me it's you're still recovering. Your your body is still like doing its thing, fighting off whatever you had. It's just frustrating. Did you have COVID yet? Yeah, I had it in October last year. Lovely. Yeah, that's a good shot. That's from a GFP show. Yeah, tell us about GFP. That GFP is not up and running these days, right? No, it was uh, Crazy Tom from DFL. Tony Alba on bass, and uh, originally we, we had uh, AWOL from Amory from Suicidal and Beastie Boys on drums. I think, and, and I think Joey you, Castillo is playing with us in this lineup here. But, oh, so, so there was a Joey connection before the Jerks, right? Yeah, yeah, we played in GFP together. But uh, I was producing them. And they're like, oh, we don't like our, the way our guitar player is playing the songs. And we liked your suggestions when we were doing pre-production. But you're in the band now. <laughs> so I got drafted to be in that band. All right. Can you talk about how your music was such a big part of skateboarding? Did you guys skate? Keith skated a bit. I never skated. My mom wouldn't let me have a skateboard. She was overprotective. 
But everybody skated. I thought everybody skated in California. Yeah, not me. No, that try surfing twice, got hit on the head with the board, got yelled at by a lifeguard, and the leash broke. That was it. After that, you just played. You just played it safe, and that's it. I'm just going to be a rock. I'm just going to play guitar, you know, and just try to not to get poisoned. By yeah. Food. By the way, Jack in the Box owns Chipotle. Enough said. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. I did not know that either. Not a fan of Chipotle. Yeah, you know, I had it on one of the recent tours we did. It was not that bad. Surprisingly, whatever I had was okay. Who's the funniest guy in that band? Which band? In Circle Jerks. Xander's pretty funny. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Everybody's got a sense of humor, but he's just a character. <laughs> All right. All right. Anybody you want to shout out? Um, we're going to, you know, thank you for coming on the show. It was nice chopping it up with you. Anybody you want to thank or shout out on the way out the door? No, obviously when Super Bowl Hardcore DC, yeah. I, oh, wait, I, wait, wait. I just find, going back to my daughter, my daughter. Greg, Greg, remember playing the Super Bowl of Hardcore DC with Agnostic Front Murphy's Law and Y2K? I do, and I, I had a sweatshirt from it and uh, ended up giving it all my old merch. She really liked that one. She kind of absconded with that one years ago, but I gave her all the old Circle Jerks merch recently, so that was kind of cool, passing it to the, the next generation. Any thoughts on how prophetic the lyrics to 21st Century Digital Boy became? <laughs> uh, I, no, but we always thought we were kind of onto something when those, that song came out, the way things were going. Yeah. <clears throat> that makes sense. Cool. All right. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. And uh, My pleasure. Yep. You want to thank anybody or anything or... Any any sponsors? Any does it need to be a sponsor shout out or anything? I don't really. I don't know. <laughs> People really. give me shit. I use it. Fuck. Um. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I got nothing to shout out except, like I said, then check out my my daughter and her music. Go see her if you're in the New York area in the tri-state area. <laughs> yeah. Yo, we'll get her. Yo, if she's that funny, tell her I want. I'm gonna get her on the show. Okay. You know, seriously, we could use some humor on it. We have Satan coming on the show. So we're always. But I hear he's got a great sense of humor. <laughs> well, I can't wait to ask him about the Rolling Stones and, and about the whole Robert Johnson thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I've tuned into that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go get something to eat. I'll talk to you later, man. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thank, thanks for, uh, for having me. And I had a great time. My pleasure. Take care. Have a good rest of the yeah, weekend. Bye-bye. Right. Well, there you have it. Our guest today was Mr. Greg Hetson of uh, Circle Jerks. What, what, what? Now you're showing up, bro? Did Fucking show's see? ending and you show up? Hey, did you see the comments when I said reporting live? I'm leaving at four. I know, but dude, we can't do album of the day, album of the week at, 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 at well, the last 10 minutes of the show. Well, you know, Drew, work responsibilities, life. Stuff got to no, happen. Ex no excuse. Can you believe this fucking guy? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Sid? <laughs> can, you, can, you, can you believe this fucking guy over here? Hey, oh, you know what? I want I, I want to. We work, Drew. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us have to work for a living. Um, exactly. <laughs> so sorry to hear that. Um, <laughs> here's a picture. We were talking with Greg about the, the trip to Argentina in 1993. And here's wow. a shot outside the hotel. In 1993. Holy shit, is that you? Yeah, that's me on the left. Evan wow. Seinfeld, who will be on our 200 show. Bobby Hamble and Deluxe, Danny Schuler. Great shot. That's yep. awesome. That is pretty that was awesome. That, that, was shit. that was a hell of a trip, man. You know? Uh, you know what was a hell of a trip, Drew? Doing seven countries in 13 days. That's a fucking trip. How so? You were out for those that may not know. Uh, Sid was out with the take. Yep, it was it was different. Greece, we did we did Greece and Greece. Our dude, our dude George from One Two Six Clothing was the tour manager in Greece, right? Yeah, he he looked out for us. Drew, Good. food was amazing. The weather was amazing. 
it was all that and then some. Did, all did you that. tour manage that or what were you doing out there? Like doing merch? Oh, I'm, I'm doing the, the tour? merch guy for this. I was a merch guy for this tour, but you know what? Still works. awesome. Still works. And who who played bass? Who played bass um, with uh, with the take out there? Actually, it was Eric Klinger who was in the Spud Monsters who played with All Scott right. back in the day. What, what also, Scott's old Scott's old band also, also at one point also played with him, played with him uh when Blood Clot did the second reiteration of the band. Yeah. So yeah. No, that I photo, mean, no, that photo that was after Urban Discipline when when I went over there with them. Well, so. true, since I since I literally ran about oh, I don't know, 26 red lights. I literally stopped by your block. I was gonna yell at you through the window. <laughs> hey, does anybody want to know what photo of the day, what 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 record of the week was gonna be? Oh yeah, here it is. Record, record, record of the week. Sid the kid. Here you go. Come, Come on, on, where are you? Yeah, there it is. There it is, guys. Jesus Christ. I, I mean, do you want me to go through it with a Drew since I'm always I fucking always I mean, myself? Yeah, I mean, don't get crazy. But the reason we picked this because it was a big and, and Greg mentioned it. This was this was a record that really influenced influenced Greg. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, for those who don't know, this is the first Creedence Clearwater revival album uh, recorded in from October 1967 to February 1968. Uh, you know, this is a very pivotal record. It was, I believe, recorded at Coast Recorders in San Francisco. Um, I mean, you could call it psychedelic rock, you could call it swamp rock, call it whatever you want, but this is that one record that just started it all for this band. You know, even with the, uh, I believe their first album or their first hit, the single came out with Susie Q, you know, it just rolled on from there. It was that, you know, I can't say it's one of those American bands. They never really, to my to my knowledge, at the time, fully got their due, but they really should have when this record came out. Even, you know, at the when time. I think, when I think of Suzy Q, band. when I when I think of Suzy Q on that record, I think about that scene in Apocalypse Now with Bill Graham when they have the Playboy bunnies play, and 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 the, and Suzy Q is 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 playing. Yeah, I never yeah, was a big. I was never a big big fan of, of this band. I, I certainly could recognize, you know. Um, their place in music history, being a, a music lover and 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 a bit of a music historian, but um, this 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 is in a band that that um, is that right? Circle Jerks did Fortunate Son. Yeah, they, Damn, they did, bro. Oh, that's right, they did. That was the link, On Drew. That, that was the link. Listen, fucking Sid. I forgot not, about that. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call Greg and get him back on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I dare Let you. The guy eat. I dare you, Drew. Now let him eat. Yeah. Let the guy eat. But I mean, you know, also just the simple fact too. Like even I put a spell on you. Was that one? Their yeah. version of that song just set the tone for this record. And the of reason, course, the reason we, the reason we chose this record was I, you know, I did my homework and Greg cited that record is when he first picked up guitar, and and it was a big influence on him lear learning um, to 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 play guitar. It, it was a huge influential. You know, produced by Saul Zanz, and that's the guy from from Fantasy Records that ended up suing John Fogerty for plagiarism because John Fogerty wrote a song that sounded a lot like one of his older songs that Saul Zanz owned the publishing to. John Fogerty actually was sued for plagiarism on one of his own songs. No, and it was actually it was, it was John Fogerty's birthday yesterday. Is that right? I'm a Awesome. What would I bullshit you? Would I bullshit you? Come on. Why would I bullshit you? I'm John gonna tell Fogarty, you. You know, you know what? That, there was two. Yeah, you know what John Fogerty record I like? Um, the uh, there was Center Field, which was I, and the one after that what was it called Eye of the Zombie? I think that had some cool shit on it actually. But I mean, I mean, for me, really, even though I was never really a big fan of the record at the time, you know, my parents would play this record a lot. But Fortunate Son. Obviously, you know, even though the Circle Jerks covered it, it just stuck. It's something about that guitar. As simple as it is, it just chugs. It, it's a catchy, it's a catchy guitar riff, and it just sets the mood for the whole song itself. Hey, you want to see a clip that I didn't play on the show? <laughs>
hmm, FYI, yeah. people, we already covered we already covered that record, so we can't. You know, I know we we, we were going to do that. Twice. Drew, the hardcore honey hole is getting dry. We need to do new shit, Drew. We're doing new shit. We're doing fucking crappy Creedence Clearwater records. What else do you hey, want? Hey, it's Out not crappy. <laughs> it's not crappy. It's awesome. Listen, punk rock, we're, I gonna, play we're, gonna, we're gonna do. Hey, did we, hey, did we do the first Ramones record? Yes, we did. Two hundred shows, bro. Dude, we've done. We've done. I got mine signed right back here. We've oh, done wow. the first. Mine, we've done the mine signed from Tommy. Huh? We like I said. We've done the first two Chromag records. We've done. Hey, the did first- we do? You know, it's a good Ramones record that I liked when it came out. Um, uh, Subterranean Jungle. I love that record. Eh. I loved it when it came it was out. Was one of my Psycho- favorites. Psychotherapy on it. I loved that record when it oh. came out. Even and even though Drew, even though Johnny Ryu's show is way far ahead. Ooh. Uh, what's the proper pronunciation of his last name? Johnny Ryu. I Ryu. keep thinking it's Rua, like like. So I'm afraid to say Ryu. it. Ryu, Ryu. I I happen to see he's playing guitar and Slapshot on this tour right now, and I had you know. Little and you you guys you guys play you uh, the Take and Slapshot did did a, a couple shows together. Uh, just did the the last show on the tour in Dortmund, the, the junkyard in Dortmund. Here you go, Ryu. Johnny Johnny Ryu. Yep. Uh, yep. Okay, that record. I'm not. I wouldn't even tell you, Drew. It's so different. And he threw it at me. I was like, "All right." Which record? It's not hardcore. It's not punk rock. So none of you motherfuckers ask. You're just gonna have to wait till the show. Oh, okay. There you go. It's one of those records. Did you do the first Good Charlotte record? <laughs> Hell, fucking no. I don't even know. I Good Charlotte. I don't even know what Good Charlotte sounds <laughs> like, man. You know, I, don't, I don't even know what good stuff. Charlotte sounds like. Rancid Dick Riders, that's all I'm going to say. Hey, I'll fucking call it like I see it. The Dick drummer, Ryder? it was the drummer of Sugar Ray of Good Charlotte. Is that right? Yeah, because when I was on tour, we did a um, we did a tour, boat tour to Mexico. And I was on tech and Good Charlotte was on it. And the night before, we were hanging out in New Orleans. And I ended up getting in a car with the drummer of Good Charlotte. Nice guy, you know what I mean? And I guess he's the drummer of Sugar uh, Sugar Ray as well. You know what I didn't mention with 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 um, Greg Hetson is like in the early '80s, got to be '82 or '83. I one memory I have is smoking a joint in my van on Avenue A with me, Harley, and Greg Hetson. For some reason, I have wow. that memory. I didn't mention mm-hmm. it, but you know this goes back a long way. I mean, that, that that's that's a a, a long memory. And uh, the next, I want to mention, this next show that we're doing is going to be really interesting. This guy is a very, 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 very interesting character. Coming up on Wednesday is Laser Lloyd. Uh, He's in my new film, The Jews and the Blues. I'm telling you, when I first met Laser Lloyd and walked away from him, I had a sense of what it was like to meet Bob Marley. I mean, he is that incredibly... Um, heavy and spiritual a person. So this Wednesday, really looking forward to uh, to Laser Lloyd uh, being on the show. That's gonna that's gonna be good. Good Charlotte, bad music. <laughs> yeah, Chris Chris Funny. gets it. He gets yeah. it. He knows. <laughs> good Charlotte suck. Well, yeah, that, yes, la- yes. Laser has Connecticut ties. That's right. I think Laser grew up in Connecticut. Yeah, for sure. He was in that band, The Last Mavericks, that was signed to Atlantic, I think. So, hey, hey, Sid, good to see you back on the show. It was great meeting you in Dortmund. Yep, yeah, so, uh, yeah. we've ha- I've had a few people, random, random people, come up to me. Oh, hey, he said great, great work on the show. I'm like, thank you. Nobody says hey, shit I- to me. People just look at me like, hey, I don't know how to take compliments well, Drew. So go figure, go figure that one. You know, I'm I'm looking forward to being back at Bari Electric at the end of next month. I am looking forward to that big time. Wait, hold on. Funny, you should let me let me get the uh that would be this show here is the next show, right? Yeah, whenever that flyer pops up, I would think so. It is this one. Boom. 
Yep. Bam, motherfucker. DJ Sydney Kids, Sewage, Blackout Shoppers, Incendiary Device, Inhuman, and Sworn Enemy. That's coming up. Oh, it's gonna be my birthday. Life. My birthday show. Matt Gray can't make it. He will be out with what's it called? Go die. Don't panic. Doing a don't pop panic. Tour. Don't panic. Go die. Don't panic. Doing go die. Tour. And 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 who's who's headlining those shows, Matt? It's uh, we're opening. Then it's Aquabats, Less Than Jake, and Bowling for Soup. You know they're big big shows and everything like that. I'm, for I'm friends soup? with the. Yeah, they did the 1985 song. Um, they but did that's the Phineas who, and that's who's headlining above Less Than Jake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Popularity. That's People it. want to see. And what, what size? Like what size? Ve- like what? What size venues? Like like um. They're doing Irving like House Pla- of Blues and stuff Irving like that. Plaza, We're doing Irving Brooklyn. Plazas. Brooklyn. Brooklyn Steel. We're doing. Oh well, I'll come out and see you play. Absolutely, totally, and make sure you heckle them all the way, Drew. All the way, just heckle. <laughs> Motherfucker can't make my show. <laughs> we're we're okay now. Because yeah, my fucking drummer awesome. is playing with with your. Oh, band. he's your drummer now. No, Mike Flaherty's my drummer, who's playing in your at, on, at your fucking show. <laughs> okay. Such um, an sorry, I had to do it. it. I think it's working out fine. Um, all right, you guys, I'm hungry too now. So, excellent, um, Matt. I'll talk to you soon. You got it. Thanks, guys. Good to see you, Sid. Hey, like I said, all those red lights was worth it today. That's all I got. Running all those red Sid, lights. Welcome back I will to say New York City, bro. Before I get, before you cut me off, Drew, I will say one thing. Mm-hmm. I should have yelled at you through the window on the way back. That's what I should have. Because that would have been live. better content. Because of course I couldn't fucking see what the fuck I'm, who the fuck I'm yelling at above like four flights. You know, of- you know where I live. Right? I know, but I'll be like, yo, motherfucker. <laughs> be one of those things. But anyway, all right, guys. True has to go do do his thing. I gotta go do do my thing. Y'all have a great all weekend. All right, I'll see and you later. Or all day later. Well, there you have it. Another one in the can. Thanks a lot, everybody. That was great. Uh thank Greg Hetzer for coming on. And we'll uh we'll see you on Wednesday uh for Laser Lloyd. So until then. Do good things and good things will come to you. What